Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Hallelujah for another blessed, a blessed day. Praise Yah, praise Yah, and welcome to our our hangout here. We're going to start off with our prayer. Actually, our shofar blast. <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah. Shema Yisrael, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Echad, Baruch Shem Kivu, Mahuto Leolam Vaed. Hear, O Israel. Yahweh is our Elohim. Yahweh is Echad. Baruch Hashem. Yahweh. Hallelujah. You shall love Yahweh, your Elohim, with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And have these words which I command you this day be upon your heart. And you shall teach them diligently to your children and speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you retire and when you rise. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand and let them be frontlets between your eyes. And you shall write them on the doorpost of your house and upon your gates. Hallelujah, everybody, and welcome. And I pray you're all doing great out there and you had a blessed, blessed week and uh if anyone wants to join us on the zoom chat uh here we go we'll put the link right here and uh then my my week was blessed my days are blessed and yahweh is so good so good and they say time flies when you're having fun thank you so much sheila for the for the super chat praise yah thank you great way to get started tonight and yes if those of you that follow me on instagram and you know, uh, my interesting thing, I learned something new today. Uh, so let's see how many of you actually follow me on Instagram. And, and somebody could say in the comments what I learned today. Let's see if anyone got that can get that one. And what else is happening? A lot of good things. We're coming up on the, the summertime here. And a lot of conferences are around. So people are going to these different conferences. Uh, we have uh, the counting of the Omar is going on. So Shiva Oath will be coming up uh, not before long. And uh, there's just, uh, you know, it's always a great time to be a follower of our wonderful creator and and have the great gift of his wonderful uh, son. And it's, uh, I did a lot of videos this week. So if anyone has comments on them. All right. Uh, I got humbled. <laughs> I got thanks. Very good. I got humbled. Username follows me on Instagram. And and you get the prize. You 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 figured it out. Uh, uh, so that's a good one. Uh, <laughs> that's a good one. Yes, I learned today what Karen means. I, I never even heard of this issue before about Karen. About Karen. Who's Karen? What's going on with Karen? And I found out today my daughter's corrected me because I'm not hip enough to know what Karen meant or what it was. And I learned today, uh, they told me that person was like Karen. And I said, oh, what's what's up with that? And then, then I, oh, that opened up a whole bag of worms. <laughs> Very interesting. But praise ya, praise ya. So I did a lot of videos this week and uh, I spoke about the hypnotism of, of, of the enemy and the devil and, uh, and how people are walking around like zombies. And, and it's true. And I'm seeing more and more people do things that go so far against the scriptures and justifying them. And it's absolutely something wrong with people. Something wrong with this world. So hopefully people are going to gonna wake up. Well, if you're joining for the first time, please put in the side chat where you're from. We're going to do our shout outs here in a moment. And my name is Paul. I'm Torah Life Ministries. I'm here in South Florida. And... And yeah, and we do live prayer every morning at 6 a.m., except Saturday morning. We do a little later. We do a live Torah reading tomorrow as well. And at 10.30 a.m. Eastern time, everything's Eastern time. And tonight we're here to fellowship. So praise Yah, praise Yah, hallelujah, hallelujah. All right, so let's, uh, 
let's do some shout outs and let's say hello to everybody who's joining us. And uh, my brother Tom's going to be joining us a little later tonight. Uh, he's running a little late. Keep him in prayer because of all the stuff he's dealing with. And um, brother Gary Lee's on here at the moment. Uh, we're going to do a shout out, a shalom to uh, brother Nino in Jacksonville. Shalom. Uh, Shabbat shalom to Henry Al. And for Chelsea from Newfoundland, shalom. Brother Richard Kearns, shalom, Brother Richard. Uh, praise y'all for a wonderful praise report. Uh, the wonderful praise report uh, that Richard's given us. Maybe you can come on and tell us about it here. That's great. Uh, Hallelujah. All right. Uh, shalom to uh, Adam Kaysen. Shalom to you. Uh, shalom to uh, Thomas Henning. Shalom. Shalom to uh, Sister Laura. Thanks for being here, my beautiful wife. Uh, Sister D, shalom in Barbados. I pray you're doing well out there. Thomas Henning, Shalom, Brother Jerry. Shalom, Brother Jerry. Uh, let's see. Uh, Sarah, Shabbat Shalom in Muscadon, Michigan. Muscadon, Michigan. Henry Al. And Kar uh, Karamic Vibes. Shalom. Yes, Thomas is in Texas. Uh, Jose Beltrio, shalom here, my neighbor in Florida. Shalom, brother. And brother uh, uh, and uh, sister Jissy, shalom. Shalom, pray all is well with you. Uh, Robin Smith, Shabbat shalom there in Texas. Nicole CB in Washington, shalom to you. We got a prayer request for, for Jen Robin, raising six young children up on our own, it says. And know him, says Shabbat Shalom from the Palm Coast in Florida. Shalom. Truth Matters, Shabbat Shalom from Phoenix. Carlin, uh, Carlin from Phoenix, Shalom. And yes, Sheila Somerville, thank you. Thank you for your prayers and your support. Thank you for your super chat. Flows with Living Water, Shabbat Shalom in Tampa, Florida. Thank you for joining us tonight as well and for being here. And Caroline Begner, Shalom from Arkansas. Pub One Loose in Panama, Shalom. Shalom from Panama. Thanks for joining us here tonight. Gerald Maraski, Shabbat Shalom in Georgetown, Texas. Truth Matters, Shalom. William Jens von Rensburg, Shalom. Flower Power, Shalom. And, uh, Sister Tabitha Honeywell, Shabbat Shalom, sister. Shabbat Shalom. Dust, Shabbat Shalom. Dave Mount, Shabbat Shalom in Creston, California. KMJJ, Shabbat Shalom. Truth Matters, again, Shabbat Shalom. All righty, all right. So, and uh, yes, for anyone else that's joining us, and we decided, I, I mean, this today I did... Uh, Eight o'clock, I'm still thinking maybe nine o'clock we'll get started uh, on, on another Shabbat possibly, but uh, things are good. Things are good. So I have several special guests coming on here tonight. Uh, one of them is uh, uh, Andrea Hazim. And Andrea Hazim, her husband, Jeff Hazim, runs uh, KLM Ministries, which is a wonderful ministry and here in South Florida. And anyway, she runs a wonderful uh, youth camp conference for training uh, leaders. Uh, so if anyone has children out there, you need to listen when she comes on here tonight, because uh, I'm going to be doing a more extensive video with her. But anybody with children looking to do something with your children this summer, in July, they're going to have a youth camp. 
it's not even a camp. It's a conference, a teaching. It's, it's TLT. It's tomorrow's leaders today. And I'm excited because I've been wanting my daughter to go for this for many years. And now she's of age to be able to go. And uh, so I'm really excited for her to go there. And, uh, and so Sister Andre will be on here in, in a little while. So we'll say hello to her soon. And let's say hello now and hello to uh, everyone else that's joining us, Jan Manning and, and, uh, and everyone else here. So I know more people will be joining us. Thank you for the super chat uh, for, uh, for Mark Ursley. Thank you. That's a blessing, a big blessing. It really is. And uh, a big encouragement. Thank you. All right, let's say hello to our guest here first. Uh, let's say hello to uh, Gary Lee. Shalom, Gary. How are you today? Hey, I'm well. Yeah, everything's good. Can't complain. Y'all's good. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Okay, Brother Gary, your microphone's not working too well. Okay, sorry. Uh, I'll pass. Uh, uh, shalom, everyone. Okay. Good to know, Long brother. talk with you. I, yes, I, hang I out here. Maybe it'll better. get better in a little while. Hold on. Let's say hello to uh, Brother Jerry. Shalom, Brother Jerry. How are you? Shalom, shalom. Praise Jehovah. Glory to Yeshua Messiah. The Sabbath is here. Let us relax and enjoy each other's company and enjoy in the rest of Yah. Hallelujah. Yes, Brother Jerry. It was nice seeing you this week on my health, my health channel. Oh, I had to. I had to make the Jackie Mason reference. I don't know if you ever heard that bit. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've one, heard one most thing, of it. One thing, everyone that works in health food stores got one thing in common: they look sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, not you. You're the picture of health. Not you, but great. Well, <laughs> how was your week? Uh, week was, my week was good. I actually, uh, I actually got to, uh, I got to minister to, to some people. There's a, there's a young woman that works in a, in a gas station nearby here and she's going to uh medical school and she's, uh, she's done for the year. And she says, I'm going away for two months. And I said, Oh, you're going back home. She says, yeah, I'm going back. Well, go she was, she was born in India when she was, but she came here, her family moved here when she was like two years old. So she doesn't have the accent or anything, but, but I, I, I blessed her. I get, you know, is it, is it, is it inappropriate to give someone the, the ironic blessing if, if they're not, uh, if they're not uh, with Yeshua, I tell, I tell her that Yeshua loves her all the time. Well, uh, you know, we bless, we, we just pray that yeah, she, her eyes get open and her heart gets open to Yahweh, you know, and uh, keep praying that for her. Indeed, indeed. Well, she was very welcome to the blessing. She was very, she was very pleased to have it, and uh, you know. So I wish her a, a safe trip. I think it's like twenty, uh, twenty-two, twenty-three hour flight to India. It's amazing. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, I don't know if you saw the side chat, but I, I know you'll appreciate this, Jerry. Even though you might not know, because you and I, I think, are the same, close to the same age. But uh, so I was driving with my children today. And my daughter says she was in the park with her friends and uh, there was a, a, an area that they weren't supposed to be in, but they, they, the ball went there. So they went there and some lady yelled at them and said, she's a Karen. And I said, well, what does that mean? <laughs> I had no idea what that meant. And uh, apparently I'm the only one that didn't know what a Karen was. Uh, and, and that's a good thing. I'm so disconnected from the news and the media today, I guess. But I thought I was pretty hip. I thought I knew certain things, but I didn't know what a Karen was. And, uh, yeah. and I, I told my daughters, I, I I'm sure no one knows what a Karen is because I didn't know. So I figured nobody knows. And first I asked a couple of 20 years old and they knew. Then I found somebody in his forties and I asked him and he knew. And then I started, re I, I must really be out of, uh, off, off the charts here. It's like they're saying, but, uh, I learned something new today. So yeah, that's uh, that that term has been around for a few years now. I mean, it must be new. A few years is like what? Two years or so? Uh, maybe like I don't know, maybe five years, maybe. Oh wow! Give wow. or take, give wow. or take. It's, it's about that, but you know, don't, dude, don't, don't don't let it bother you, man. Don't let it bother oh, you. Oh, I'm you not know, letting it bother we, me. We're supposed to be. 
Found we're, we're, we're supposed to be in the world, but not of the world. And uh, you're doing a, a far better job. I, 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 I pray that I can be more like you, Paul. I, I, you know, just the way you are, being detached. And I, I, I've got friends that are detached, and you know, they're. I, I, got, I got an email. I actually, in fact, I shared it with you. I, I just got an email like maybe an hour or so ago from a friend of mine that's over uh, out near the west, not on the west coast, but near the west coast. And um, it was uh, some sobering news, some very sobering news as far as the state of the world and uh, some things that uh, the resident house plant is uh, trying to put into effect as far as uh, medical emergencies um, with the uh, with the WHO, which is run by the CCP. So I'm no, going to talk in code. <laughs> we, we just got to, there's so much going on out there. I mean, you can't listen to it. You can't. That's, that's, you know, not for us. I mean, it's good to know what's going on. But when I hear all this stuff and I see all the reports, whether they're true or whether they're false, it's not for us. You know, it's well, not for my ears. Yeshua, Yeshua did tell us to watch and pray, correct? To what, what it says in Ezekiel, to be watched. Excuse me, it would be watch men, right? But at the same hand, there are certain things we should be uh, involved in and some things that aren't for us. Those are things of this world. You know? This they, is true. They, this is you know, true. We're citizens of a different kingdom. <laughs> that, that's, that's this world stuff going on. You know? No, I no mean, bad. okay, There's take it. it. Jerry, I know, I, you know. I, I'm, I, I know some things that are going on in the world, but it's still in the world. It's the world would be in the world, but not of the world, right? Precisely. Yeah. So I, I know there are some people that don't agree with me on this stuff, but when I hear a lot of this stuff, a, a lot of stuff out there is fear-based and a lot of stuff out there is, is the hypnotism of, I, I did a video this week called the hypnotism of the devil. And, 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 you know, people walking around like zombies because they're, they're just literally, you know what it was it called? It starts with an M, MR something of how they, they hypnotize and Britney Spears and all these other movie stars and everything else. And this is what they do to people through the TV sets and everything else. They, they literally hypnotize people to get up and do things that go against the word of our creator. You know? Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So, absolutely. That's, uh, you know, my, my parents, my parents used to call, you know, way back, back, like, you know, 40, 40, 50 years ago, my parents called it the boob tube. There's a reason for that. You know, I flew out of a plane. I jumped out of a plane twice. I went skydiving. And the first time I went skydiving, uh, uh, the, the guy that I went with, he said, he was the instructor. He said, you know, now you see what it, it was literally beautiful where I when I when I you know what I was seeing. But he said, now you know why the birds tweep and twerk. You know, they wake up in the morning, they tweet, they fly around, they look at everything. You know, their world, you know, is they don't have money or know where their food's coming from, but they could tweet and sing and be happy every day. You know, and uh, the world is absolutely so beautiful, and 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 everything we look at is is absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. You know, from the sunrise to the sunset and the birds and the trees and everything. But the point being is, even though they don't have food, they don't know where they're getting their food from. Uh, they, they, they don't seem to be too so worried where they're, they're, they're disabling themselves so much where they can't fly or something. And this is what people are doing themselves. They're disabling themselves so much they can't even walk or get out of bed because they're so depressed and scared and worried. And, you know, it's it's. It's not for us. It's not for us. Amen. Amen. Well, so speaking yeah. of, of birds, I got to tell you a quick story. I, um, every time I get behind the wheel, I pray and I say, yeah, please give me a steady hand and a watchful eye so that no man and so that no creature will be hurt when I pass by. And I say that every time I get behind the wheel in Yeshua's name. And tonight or earlier, this, late this afternoon, this evening, uh, I'm, I'm driving home. And uh, maybe not even a half mile from where I live, and I go through a traffic light, and all of a sudden, it, it's, it's not dusk yet, but it's, I mean, the sun's pretty low in the sky. And it came out of the shadows. A turkey stepped right in front of me, 
right out into traffic on a main road. So I walked up the brakes. I fishtail the the rear the right side of the rear end of my car sw- swerved out to the right, and he started gobbling at me. Oh! <laughs> so I beeped the horn and I was like, "Come on, come on, let's go!" And I put my hand out the window and held it up for the traffic coming in the other direction to stop. And gratefully they did. And I'll tell you, this turkey took his time walking across the street. But I praised Yah for giving me the, uh, you know, for letting me see him in time. So praise Yah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Well, good, good. Well, I'm glad you're okay. And uh, yes, good, good. All right. Mr. Hold Mr. on Mr. there, Jerry. How's the weather there, by yeah. the way? Oh, it was beautiful today. It was 80 degrees. 80 wow. degrees and sunny and wow. sunny and you can you could uh, you could see the moon all afternoon you could see the moon up in the sky I'm sure you could too uh I don't know I wasn't looking I wasn't looking up today uh but okay good good well thanks for being here hold on let's say hello to uh uh brother max shalom brother max how are you shalom shalom I'm assuming you can hear me yeah we can hear you oh good good yeah Yes. Oh, last week I had issues. No, I wasn't here last week. That's right. We were on the road somewhere and found ourselves with no internet. So, ha, <laughs> didn't get to see you. So, uh, so how was your week? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. My week was really good. Like I said, we, we were traveling. We still have the opportunity again, um, because they're sort of easing off some of the restrictions and have been so, so that was good. And it's, it's chilling down. So I had to put on my, my winter clothing today. Yeah, so you're on the other side of the world. Let me ask you a question. You're on the other side of the world. Uh, do you know what a Karen means? Yeah, yeah, we know what one of those are. We've, we've got quite a few of them, actually. Um, <laughs> I learned that today. I never knew what it meant until today. Oh, uh, I, I think I only found out um, six months ago or something. It, it was yeah. a reference somebody made, and I had no idea. But yeah. Google's got all the answers and tells you what you need to know. Apparently, actually, when I found out, I, I was my, my my children said, "You don't know what a car." I said, "No." So I, I went to I went to Siri on the uh, iPhone, and it said it's a da- a Danish person, uh, a Danish name or something. So my my kids oh. were just shaking their heads. <laughs> They're like, "No, Dad," <laughs> you know. Yeah. So. Uh, Oh, I'm looking at the side chat here. Larry uh, Targret says, I almost got creamed on Congress Avenue in Lake Worth. So Shalom, Larry. Uh, I actually live a walking distance from Congress Avenue in Lake Worth Road, uh, Larry. I don't know where you're located, Larry. Let me know where you're located. Anyway, Max, so how's everything coming along with United and Yah and the uh, Battle Cry event? How are the tickets selling? Um, they're, they're, they're selling well, to my understanding. Um, it's, it's doing good. There's still tickets to go, so... Um... And I think, what are we up? Still a month and a half away, is it? Um, so, yeah, and um, everybody's still on board. It's all good. And we're really looking forward to it. Hallelujah. For those of you that don't know, on, on June 25th and 26th is the Battle Cry event that United and Yah is having at unitedandyah.com. I'll be speaking there. Brother Max will be speaking there. And we'll have other several other speakers uh, just sharing about various topics, but the, the main thing is is the, the money that's raised for this event through the ticket sales uh, and through anyone's donations are going to go to uh, widows and orphans. And this is a great opportunity to, uh, to help widows and orphans because a lot of us know we should and we want to, but we don't know any widows or orphans. But this is uh, just as good enough from a helping standpoint and from a scriptural standpoint. So praise Yah for United and Yah and everything. Uh, that organization is doing. And of course, the Hallelujah Scriptures. Wow. I mean, that th- th- those scriptures are popping up everywhere and everyone's blessed by it. I mean, I'm seeing all over the world, I'm seeing posts and I look in the background or something and I see the Hallelujah Scriptures and that's just great. So wonderful work uh, they're doing there at, at Hallelujah Scriptures. So thank you, Max, for all the effort you put into being part of that organization. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Um, like I say, just just a small part that I play in the in the grand scheme of of all the believers who you know in your own backyard you can you can be a witness for the for the truth. Um, and we, the Hebrew English translation of the Hello Scriptures has actually been very popular over the last um, year or two. 
Uh, we 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 nearly sold out of those, so we've we've had a new print run being done of those. And now, uh, just in case people don't aren't aware, we're, our next big project that uh, that we're working on is called the um the four by four version. So it's going to have it's a parallel version with English, modern Hebrew, or the the typical sort of square script that we see today, um, Paleo Hebrew, and also um, Proto Hebrew, which is the sort of Picto Hebrew that people are sort of starting to take a, a, a look at now it's sort of a phoenician style early scripts that that date like two or three thousand years back now interesting interesting well that's a really excited and everyone could see that on your website right or yeah yeah no there's website, an article yes. about it yes yeah go to hallelujahscriptures.com and then you can read about that new version on the way yes uh well, well praise yah praise yah for that wonderful work and hallelujah well, uh, will you get a chance to sing for us tonight? Yeah, yeah. I've just got to try and find my guitar because I, I had it on the road and I'm, I put it somewhere. I'll, go, I'll find How it long later. were you away for? Just the whole week? Uh, yeah, it was just the week. Uh, I think it was, yeah. Maybe it might have been eight days, just over a week. Wow, that's uh, a nice little trip and uh, glad you got back home safely. Yeah, yeah, and it was good. There's actually less people out around it. I, th I think there's still a sort of a... um an unnatural fear of leaving your house um so yeah the roads are, are quite quiet and people don't seem to be going anywhere still yeah i mean it wasn't too bad i mean the, i remember when everything was shut down here i mean i i went out one day and it was it was like pretty empty outside it was pretty nice no traffic or anything yeah i mean the, the sad runoff is is that uh, a lot of the like the little local shops along the way they're all shut up They've, they've gone because they couldn't support themselves in this economic climate and which is really sad yeah yeah it is it is but you know yah knows what he's doing and uh and, and and he knows what he's allowing to happen and uh you know it's it's you know one thing passes and another thing is ahead so we just gotta just be ready right yeah i think we you'd have to be a little bit blind not to see we are in uh, sort of heading towards some last day events and um, we just have to do all we can with the time at hand to uh, there's a scripture that talks about redeeming the time we've got no time to waste really um, just be a witness where you can go out talk to people you know take the word with you wear a shirt or whatever you have to do to 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 bear the bear witness of the truth yeah yeah well I mean I just the end time started when you know when Yeshua <laughs> uh was uh put on the cross right that was uh many years ago but that, you know yeah well and, uh, he, he he even said um it's coming soon and our our sort of uh, thoughts of soon are um a, a lot different than what what yahweh thinks as is soon do you realize that every generation since the time of yeshua believed and was hopeful that that was going to be the generation he returned yeah, I'm not sure about the word hopeful. It probably doesn't sit well because I'm not really looking forward to the day of judgment. But the thousand year reign and then the you know the return of Mashiach, of course, looking forward to that a great deal. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, hopeful to say like, well, this will be it. I mean, return. Come on, let's see him. You know, and this is how glorious that'll be. And yes, you know, we got a judgment coming upon us, definitely. And uh, but look up. For your redemption draws nigh. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm excited. I'm excited. Just uh, every single day, I'm excited. I get the opportunity to tell people about Yeshua, and and you know, it's just, it's. Just, I don't know if you get, you feel this, or Jerry, or anyone else, but the more I learn in Scripture, the more I see. You know, I mean, it's just you see, like. I don't know if it's the enemy or something like I made a video the other day about the hypnotism of the devil. And you just see people walking around like zombies, like literally, like they're literally, they, 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 it's just, they're walking around like zombies speaking and doing things in a way that, you know, it's crazy. There's going to be come time soon, AI robots that are going to be no, more realistic and more human than people because people are walking around like robots should be walking around and robots are going to be walking around like people uh, should be walking around. But just, it's like literally people, you know, they're just, 
It's just what they're doing. I mean, zombies. Mm-hmm. I mean, when I was a little kid, I used to, you know, every now and then late at night on the three channels I had on TV or whatever it was, there would be a zombie movie in the middle of the night. And you'd see them with the face, their eyes had like, like, like black stuff around their eyes and they'd be walking like whatever. And, 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 you know, in a certain way. And then when I walk on the street today, I see people with black stuff and they're literally with their phone, they're walking like with, between them looking at their phones and they're just, they're like, they have that slow, fast walk. It's like, they want to walk fast, but they're slowing down because they're focused on their phone. They'll literally walk right into a moving car without any people in the car. Can't see that person come because that person, in the car's on their phone. And it's just, this is yeah, crazy. I, I was I was actually blessed because my parents didn't allow me to watch TV when I was little. So maybe that's why I'm a, I don't know, a little bit more outdoorsy and stuff. Um, I think we're allowed an hour a week, which basically meant we could watch uh, something on like a, it was an afternoon movie on the weekend or something with our parents. But um, yeah, it's not just the phones. It's 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 like you well know. It's what's in our food. It's what's in the air. Uh, Farmer Key, of course, plays a, a massive role in the whole thing, and there's lots more that could be said. But hey, let's just praise your way today. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! All right, uh, we have uh, Sister Sonia joining us. Uh, Shalom, Sonia. I pray you're well. I know you're just watching here, but uh, Shalom, sister, and pray you're doing well out there. All right, Shalom, Shalom. All right, sister, thank you. And kid, I continue to lift you up in prayer. And Yah is so good, and uh, he's with us always, so we're never by ourselves, but he's always right by our side. So praise Yah, hallelujah. And uh, uh, and thank you, everybody, for coming here tonight. I know some of you are still joining us. It's a little early on, on the West Coast here, so uh, so thank you. And uh, if anyone has any comments or questions or anything you want to discuss, uh, we could do that. Somebody has a question right here. Is uh, And Brother Tom is going to be joining us. He's just running a little late. Uh, uh, somebody's asking about Jeremiah 49, 25. So let me, uh, let me look at that before I comment on it. And if anyone else knows that scripture offhand, go right ahead. But, uh, somebody says here, uh, there are so many different translations. So, uh, I'll look at one of the translations and we'll see here in that. And, uh, Sister Pam's joining us now. Shalom, Sister Pam. Thanks for being here, uh, getting into the word. And actually, I'm going to read the word uh, as well. Shabbat uh, shalom. Uh, okay, Jeremiah Anyone familiar with this scripture, you're welcome to, to comment on it as well. 49.25. How is the city of praise not forsaken, the city of my joy? So I don't have to read more be, besides that other than just that one verse, but that's what my translation says. Uh, so Damascus has been uh, feeble, she has turned to flee, and trembling has seized her. Anguish and sorrows have taken her like a woman given birth, and that's quoting Isaiah. Uh, yeah, Karen Lee talking about Damascus and uh, judgment that's going on here. I'd have to read the whole chapter in more context uh, to, to comment more on it. But if anyone actually says anything, let's see. No, I'm just wondering if he's given the wrong quote because that of looking at the comparison of the different translations is, is really not much difference in any of them. Yeah, yeah. So maybe if, if that's the right uh, translation, let us know. And in the meantime, Shalom, Sister Pam, how are you? Okay, as we're waiting for Sister Pam's audio to connect, Shalom. maybe. Shalom, can oh. you hear me? Yeah, we hear you now. How's it going? Oh, well, actually, um, I haven't really had a very good week at all. I, I'm on crutches. Um, I really did something terrible to my back last Friday. 
so um, I'm just trying to laying low. I've got um, an interferential current machine on my back, which I I use to um, try to heal my back. But anyway, that's I'm, I've been in a lot of pain all week. How how'd you hurt your back? I was um, I overdid it gardening. I I was shoveling um, garden soil from the pile into the wheelbarrow to fill up uh, a raised bed, and so I was doing that. And then I had to shovel up the strawberries; they got very badly compacted. So I was just um, trying to fix up my my strawberries, and I just I just overdid it. I just overdid it. I'm not as young as I used to be, and you know, I the, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So I tore a muscle. I'm sure that must be what it is. Well, I know how painful that is. We lift you up, uh, Father Yahweh. We lift up Sister Pam, and and her injury, and 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 Father Yahweh. We just praise you and uh, thank you for your love of your. Uh, your creation and your children and uh, just lead sister pam to the what will help her heal uh give her that information and that knowledge and that wisdom uh and we know you'll provide for her those things and we thank you in yeshua's name for that yeah well you hang in there sister you stay strong okay yes thank you and you know um my husband here he has just been great he has done the cooking He's bringing me water bottles. He brings me the ice. Um, so, you know, he, he has been just great. He's doing everything. Did the vacuuming and just so, so wonderful, so helpful. So brought me crutches. So I'm thankful for that. And, oh, uh, praise y'all. Praise y'all. Oh, there you go. A nice, nice shirt there. <laughs> yeah, I love my shirt. Thank you. Yes. Oh, praise y'all. All right. Well, uh, you just relax, sister, and just take it easy and uh, let Yahweh do his healing. Amen. Okay. 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 So well, I know uh, we had uh, Brother Joseph Ags join us. Shalom, Joseph. How are you? Shalom. Shalom. Just uh, it's a little dark. You can't really see me, but uh, I'm just walking outside right now by this this beautiful river that I live nearby in uh so like on, on on Shabbat, I like to go for a walk walk by the river and just kind of like look at look at creation, you know. Where do you live? Uh, I live in a town called Lowell, in uh, about a half hour outside Boston. Okay. On the border of New Hampshire. Okay. Well, it's, good. Uh, yeah. Brother Jerry said the weather was beautiful out there. So. Yeah, it's nice. It's 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 a relief from the because uh, the winters are brutal in New England. So, uh, you're in Florida. You don't got to worry about that. No, no, I don't. <laughs> so, but good. Thanks for joining us tonight, man. And uh, praise Yah. Praise Yah. Hallelujah. Yep. Thank you. I just wanted to join you guys and just uh, meditate a little bit over here and listen, listen to them. What was the scripture that you guys were talking about? Just curious. Maybe. I can... Well, I don't know. He, they were saying a Jeremiah 20, uh, 49, 25, but there's no real different translation of that. So I don't know if... Uh, Forty nine twenty five. You meant if you meant something else, so okay. So so yeah. All right, uh, brother. Well, just think, any, huh? I was just having a discussion in the chat, and what he's saying is the um the Hebrew word lo, as in no, that the negative participle is missing. Um, but what is the other translations say not left, but deserted actually supersedes that and doesn't need the negative participle because deserted is a negative. Oh, okay. I don't know Thanks. if it's a, that's a huge issue and what what's the... Yeah. Thank so you Jeremiah for 20, 20, clarifying uh, that. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. I'll look it up. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, somebody was mentioning uh, on another note, uh, the Jonathan Kahn movie that came out. I don't know how many of you saw the Jonathan Kahn movie, but last night it appeared at movie theaters around the country at the Harbinger. I guess they made a movie out of the book. I didn't see it. I didn't want to see it or care to see it, but they made a, a movie out of it. So uh, somebody said it's going to be showing again next week as well. Uh, so if anyone saw that, 
wants to comment on it, you go ahead and do so. All right. And uh, all right. There he is, Brother Tom. Shalom, Brother Tom. How you doing? Hey, Shabbat Shalom. I'm doing really good. Thanks, Brother Paul. How are you? How you doing, man? Oh, doing amazing. Amazing. How was your week? Oh, I had a really good week, uh, finally. Yeah. So praise Yahweh for the Sabbath, man. Nice, nice to be here. Good, good, man. Good, good. And we'll continue to lift you up in our prayers and and everything going on there. And uh, yeah, so, but uh, hey, Tom, I got a good one for you because I know you've been busy, so you probably don't know about this, but uh, my daughter's taught me something today. And I don't know if, you know, if, if you know, but uh, do you know... Uh, you know what a Karen is? A Karen? Yeah. I've heard this before. <laughs> heard this I didn't before. know. Don't feel bad. I didn't know at all. And I learned today. And I didn't know. I had no idea. Yes. What is it? Remind me of what it is. Uh, it's, uh, uh, how could I say it kindly? I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's a woman that demands, it's the kind of person that, like, if they go to the store or in a restaurant or whatever, they're entitled and they want to speak to the manager. <laughs> if you know the type that I'm that I'm talking about, oh, so I want to talk to the manager right now. So somebody that's going to complain about the service, something like that. If you it's, complain it's about anything, just like that. If, you're, if you're walking your dog, if you're walking your dog, they'll say, "Hey, don't walk your dog here." You know, you have no right to walk your dog here. That sort of thing. It's just and people make t like TikTok videos of them and post them online. Oh, you know, something just, like uh, you get the TikTok slang people. term. And they'll often call the police on you for no reasons. That too, yeah. Yeah. Right. So, well, I guess, Tom, in, in, in the old days, we had another name for somebody like that. But I guess today they refer to them as a Karen. <laughs> yeah, right. Everything <laughs> changes now. They put a meme behind everything, right? But the thing is, I didn't even know what it was. And my daughter said, Dad, you're so out of touch with everything. I, I guess I am. I had no idea. And then, uh, yeah. Uh, so... Uh, Personally, I think that we're, we're not the ones out of touch. This generation's out of touch, if you ask me. Exactly, exactly. It's okay, it's okay. Well, uh, you know, there we, we should make up some new terms. or Well, we have new terms, but that was uh, pretty funny. And I knew you would agree with, I mean, I, I had a feeling that you, because we don't have time for this stuff to look around at all this stuff, so. Yeah. But anyway, Tom, I'm glad you're here. Uh, and just uh, thank you for being on here tonight. And uh Hold on for a moment because, uh, oh, so in the comments, uh, in the comments, uh, my wife's showing exactly what it, what this, the definition is. So she that's a kind definition of that. But if you go on YouTube, it, it says it shows. And uh, anyway, my daughters think I'm out of touch with this. I didn't know, but <clears throat> I learned something today. So so uh, uh, speaking of which, I was telling everybody, and it's good that you're here, Tom, because this is good timing. So for years, I mean, uh, one of my... Uh, favorite brothers and best friends is uh, Dr. Jeff Hazim, and he has a wonderful ministry in uh, South Florida here uh, called KLM Ministries. And we got to get him on a show sometime. He's, he's wonderful. And I, I, I know him and his wife, Andrea, for many, many years. And uh, they're just such important people in my life. And uh, they have such a passion and a heart for youth. Uh, and I've never met people that have so much of a passion for people, for you. And me, I mean, this is uh, on my heart. And I, I just love to uh, help support and, and, and anyone that has anything to do with youth. And it's such an important thing. And this is why I teach so much about the mistakes we've made in our lives. So youth don't, don't make those same mistakes or just, you know, I just, it's just wonderful that uh, people are out there doing this. Anyway, Dr. Jeff and his ministry has a great youth ministry, but uh, Andrea, his wife, has a wonderful thing that she's created, and uh, it's it's a a, a lead, young leaders conference, and she's going to talk about it for a few minutes here. Because if anyone has, oh, I'm going to do a more extensive video with her about this. But if anyone has any children or a youth, or young teenagers. Uh, that are looking to do something this summer. I'm telling you, don't don't waste time sending them to some uh, secular camp where they're going to get themselves in trouble. Uh, send them somewhere where they're going to learn uh, how to make wise decisions in life. And you know, I'm very very careful where I send my daughters and where I allow my daughters to go. Uh, and and uh, for years, I've been wanting my 
uh, daughter to go to this camp, but she wasn't of his age, but now she's of age. So she's going to be going to the uh, uh, to this uh, leadership camp that uh, or conference that Andre is going to talk about. First, first, let's say hello to her. Uh, shalom and Shabbat Shalom, Andrea. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Thanks for having me, Paul. I'm excited oh, to be here. Uh, thank you for uh, coming back here again. You do this every year, and every year it gets better and better. And it's in South Florida, and people are coming from all over the country, maybe even all over the world, uh, to be part of this. Uh, and uh, so tell us a little about uh, this event. And everyone that has uh, uh, children, listen up. Well, this is our eighth year. It's called Tomorrow's Leaders Today, TLT. That's what I tell the youth they are. I affectionately call alumni that. I'm like, you're my TLT, Tomorrow's Leaders, but not tomorrow, it's for today. So it's really a movement now. I mean, we have our, our alumni starting clubs in schools or in their homeschool co-ops. They have a podcast now. And then this is our summer training. So it's really exciting to see uh, that it's my eighth year. I have students who come almost every year and they're now speakers with me. They're mentors. I've taken young people to tr uh, travel. I call it a serving leader mission. We went one year to Scotland for a week, England for a week, and Italy for a week. And I taught them how to, to teach. I mean, I'm training trainers and I'm mentoring mentors. That's why it's a leadership organization. So they're really working on developing who they are, their identity. Because, you know, you look around this world today, these young ones don't know who they are. And they could even be from a, a wonderful, godly family. They still have to discover, choose in, and, you know, get the baby steps to see what a really a, a walk for themselves looks like. So I like to create a very special environment that I wish I had when I was young. That's why I do it. My parents were divorced when I was young and it was very tragic divorce. And then my dad got married three more times. My mom got married again. And it was like heartbreak after heartbreak from a child's point of view, which neither one of them truly considered at all what we were going through. And if I had some of the tools then that I teach these young people now, I think I would be so much more equipped to know how to handle anger and unforgiveness and um, just even my mom's personality versus mine, which were so different. And, you know, you just, they need to be equipped. Young people need to be equipped. Actually, even the Florida school board has mandated that every high school student has to have five hours of what they call social and emotional learning. And that happened after the shooting. They're realizing that students don't know how to deal with when they're bullied or um, inappropriate things that happen in schools or all the divorce situations, the self-harm and suicide rates are going through the roof. And, you know, even I, we, my husband and I, we've been married 23 years. We have three sons. We have a great marriage. And even still, my sons go through things. They have to learn how to process it and develop emotionally and spiritually to know how to deal with the world they live in. So that's kind of the heart behind why I've done it. Um, it's come a long way in eight years. It's amazing. We have about, oh, anywhere between 35 to 50 students this year. We're going to open it up to 56 and then we're going to cap it out. And then even the ones that are not teenagers, where they're the students, or I call them deal candidates that apply, they can come as support staff or a mentor or a media team, or there's lots of different roles where I can en enroll somebody who's maybe more college age, quote unquote, age, and everyone's getting just as much. Money. I mean, even me, I'm one of the, I write the curriculum, I facilitate it, and I learn from the students. I love it. It's, to me, I can't even believe I get to do this kind of work to hold that special safe place where a student can get vulnerable, get real, know that they matter, their voice matters, how to speak appropriately, how to take authority over their thoughts, break lies they believe, step into who they were called to be, and um, all of that in such an uplifting atmosphere where it's contagious. Well, what I see is in the churches today is uh, youth groups are pretty much a joke and, 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 and in a bad way. They're just nothing that they should be. But what you're doing is like a youth ministry. It's, it's, a, it's a youth group the way it should be. And uh, it, it's just absolutely wonderful. And even though there's a lot of work that's involved, it is a ministry what you're doing. And you're ministering to these 
uh, children and teaching them and raising them up. And it's a, uh, it's a wonderful thing. And I encourage you to keep going and uh, everybody get to their website, give us the website and tell us the dates and what's the age range of the children that go to this. Okay. So they start going into seventh grade. Usually they're 13. I, I will take a 12 turning 13 as long as they're going into seventh grade all the way through 19 going into college when they're 20 and above, then they can come be on my team. But this is what one of the young people wrote this, and I'll read this to you. This is what they say. We aren't the next. We are the now. We aren't the future. We are the present. We're not looking for a brighter tomorrow. We're leading for a better today. We are TLT, tomorrow's leaders today. So they're really getting put up to big things. And, and the dates this year are July 17th to the 23rd. Um, it's in Pompano Beach at a beautiful hotel, the Hilton. We have a hotel there and the conference room, and then we use the hotel rooms there, and it's right by the beach, so we get to enjoy that. And um, yeah, so registration is now. Um, I'm able to offer every, all of your listeners, Paul, in this month, the month of May, a hundred dollar discount, so they can put mention your show in the promo code. And um, I would love to host any of these young people that are out here. Back to what you were saying about youth groups. You know, my sons grew up um, with a lot of friends that were believers and they would go to different youth group camps in the summers and, or even just youth groups in general. And, you know, cause to me, I mean, I taught them at home, but if they wanted to go socially and experience a fun youth group, great. But, you know, I saw what was going on and they would tell me, Oh mom, you don't even know what they're exactly. doing. Exactly. Happens. They're like hooking up in the back or my friend was a security guard at a mega church. He'd find them doing things in the stairwell. You yeah. Know, yeah. You it's know, crazy. Uh, their parents think they dropped them off and they're going to youth group, but that's, you know, and I'm not saying that it's all like that. Like there's definitely a remnant of like, let's say out of a hundred kids in this mega church, I'm probably about 20 of them were like serious about their faith and really wanted to go places with God but the rest were like, you know, giggly middle school or high schoolers that were there to like a cute boy or whatnot, you know, and it, it, it because they have to choose in. And that's just their age. They're young. They're they hear about God. May or may be a good role model of like, face facts. There's a lot yes. of who say they're believers and they may not live that way. And that's hard for young people because they're trying to figure it out. Or maybe their pastor falls at the big mega church near me, the pastor fell. And then the youth group pastor stepped down. And these kids are going, what's going on? Who do I trust in leadership? They don't know. So they have to overcome that, believe what they decide what they believe, and then decide to not just know it, but do it all as an immature teenager. It's a lot. Sure, sure. And uh, I just, just me knowing you and Dr. Jeff. And uh, I know uh, your heart for children and youth and, and your knowledge of the scriptures. And it's, it's just a great environment and, and children should go there. And uh, so I posted the link, everybody, uh, the okay. tltmovement.com. Uh, I posted it. Now, I want to tell you, if you don't have children, uh, if you're looking uh, to uh, donate or, or do something with your funds, this is a great, great ministry. Uh, and that's the way you could help out as well. You don't just need children to be involved in what they're doing. Uh, so uh, please go to the website and consider that. So it's uh, really great. So uh, absolutely, thank thank you for what you're doing. Yeah, I'm thank you. And uh, you and I are going to be doing a more extensive uh, interview on this at another time. If anyone has any questions, just go to that website and, and you contact. Andrea, now give give them uh, the website to, I know this isn't about Jeff, but give the website to his ministry because uh, he does a wonderful ministry and he has a youth group, but he also has a, on YouTube, he has his, uh, his sermons on YouTube that they're really great. So uh, g- give his website out real fast. Tell them. Uh, K-E-M for short, Kingdom Embassy Ministries.org. Kingdom Embassy Ministries.org. Yes, please go there. There's so many resources. It's unbelievable. It's really like an online seminary. It's becoming. And they, he recently just published um, a devotional, which is amazing. It's it's 52 weeks in the devotional. It's daily. It's like a weekly devotional where it's all 
the word of God based on the Torah. Now we know, I, I know your history and knowledge of the Torah and everything else. And I, I'm getting some questions here, but so what, uh, from a, from a scriptural standpoint, I mean, uh, in, in your curriculum, is there any Bible studies or, uh, I know, I know the character you're teaching the children, but from a biblical standpoint, people that the children are there a whole week. So people are asking what, uh, from a biblical standpoint involved in that. Well, it, all the fruit of the spirit, they are, I want to call it indoctrination. They're being indoctrinated with the fruit of the spirit and all of the gifts of the spirit. I mean, how about forgiveness, you know, do unto others. They're learning in a practical way with true tools of how to, how, what that really looks like in life. You know what I mean? And I tell them, you know, things that I've overcome in my life, the mentors are walking alongside them the whole week, helping stoke the flames the day before any of them arrive. I mean, my team, we are praying over every seat and, you know, welcoming the Holy spirit. It looks like a prayer revival in there before any student ever walks in the door. And, you know, they can't, they don't stand a chance. The Holy Spirit's there. A revival happens every year, but organically. And I'll tell you, it isn't like you're not going to look through pages of my curriculum and see, oh, this scripture and that scripture. I do that on purpose because, like I said, a lot of them see hypocrisy. And it's like, uh, 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 you know, they hear that at youth group or whatever they see at home. I want them to choose in because it's interesting. And they go, wow, I never heard it that way before. So it's framed as a leadership intensive training for young eagles. That's what I tell them. You were born for greatness, to soar, to excellence, exceptional, extraordinary. You are not a chicken or a crow on a barnyard floor. God did not create you to be a, you know, average, you know, like mediocre person. How is that building the kingdom? How is that serving anything? You have so much potential. I tell you, your, your pure potential. So with that potential, when they start to understand that they're worth something, oh my gosh, I'm a son or a daughter of the king. When you know that, you walk differently. You hold your head differently, your stature. You're, you become in your full stature, like a beautiful tree in God's kingdom garden and fruit can't but help grow. It's so exciting when you see them do that. Hallelujah. Well, I'm looking forward to... Uh uh to the camp every year and uh and, and just thank you for doing what you do i love it it's yes. an honor and now everybody uh andre hazim is going to sing a song for us she's uh <laughs> yes uh what song are you going to sing <laughs> no song but you know what i'll tell you of our nursery rhyme that we like to talk about i go and i do chapels or assemblies and i have a shirt that says words matter we talk about sticks and stones will break my bones that words will never harm me. And then we go, eh, that's a lie. What's up with that? What's up with that lie? And then we start to really take a deep dive into their heart. And we say, who has the courage? Raise your hand and come up here. If you have the courage, the words that have hurt you. And I'll tell you, I was at a middle school not long ago. It was a hundred kids there. And this girl raised her hand. She came up, what courage? And she said, every day, my mother tells me I'm worthless every day. Can you imagine living that way as a seventh grader, eighth grader? You don't even know who you are and your own mother's telling you you're worthless. And I said, well, how do you deal with it? And we, I helped her process it a little bit. And then I said, okay, you know what? You matter and words matter. And let's reverse that and speak words of life over her. Who can speak words of life? And like seven of them raised their hand and they were like, you're an amazing friend. And I love when you share your dream of being a doctor one day. And you're so, you're such a good listener. And she looked like a wilted flower that like bloomed back up, like ready for life again. That's amazing. You know, I know a lot of believers who don't even practice those kinds of things. Like just speaking words of life to somebody just cut because you can, you know, Absolutely. Absolutely. That's great. Well, uh, that is wonderful. Again, the dates are on the website. It's July, what? 17th to the 23rd in Palm Seven, Beach. 17th to the 23rd. So before we move along and uh, do some fellowship and songs, I'm going to sing here in a little while because I'd love to sing. Uh, is uh, do, Does anyone have a question for Andrea while we're here? Yeah, Shalom, Jose. Go ahead, Tom. I don't necessarily have a question. I'm sending my son, Nicholas, to the camp, of course. <laughs> and I uh, just want to say thank you, Andrea. And uh, what you said is very important. 
Um, and I, I did a lot of research on what you're talking about, about how our world has changed so much. Oh my goodness. I mean, it used to be a common function in a workplace or a home environment to have God-fearing, Yah-fearing people, you know? And now we have less and less of that and the enemy is at hand and we're doing the work of the enemy and it's installing into our children. And we're not even opening up a Bible anymore, teaching the words of wisdom. And, and the idea of what you're talking about is that the normal function of what people look like were, were Yah or God-fearing people. So everything they did was the fruit of the spirit. They didn't really have to speak it or say it. They were just living it. Right. But, but now I find myself actually talking about it because we've walked away from it. So now we got to bring it back to what we once had in this country. And, and that is going back to Yahweh's or God almighty, the father of the universe's ways, his ways. I, and I believe what you're doing at the school is giving these kids the ways of the father and letting them be the human beings that they were created to be through the, through Yahweh and through gifting. I think it's wonderful. Thank you so much for what you're doing. Thank you for saying that. I, I mean, I really can't even believe I have the honor to win the hearts of these young people and to lift them up and help them know that they're worth something because the world wants them to believe they're worthless, that they should compare themselves to everybody else and that they don't have enough followers. They're not pretty enough. They're not smart enough. They'll never be good enough. So you might as well just take your life or just harm yourself or sit back down. You have nothing good to say. What are you really going to do in this world? And that's a lie. And I love that, the, the, I don't know if it's a scripture or just kind of a saying, that's a, it's a saying that says, you know, share the people, but, and if necessary, use words. You, your life should be so shiny. God is glory, right? He is glory with a capital G. We're supposed to be his image. Hallelujah. He should be so shiny and glory with a lowercase g. You know, just like I always say, like this, this, this cell phone, it's amazing, right? It's amazing until it dies, then it's worthless. But if it dies, we have to just take the cord, right? Plug back in. What are we plugging into? Our lowercase s to his uppercase s. Our lowercase g for glory, his uppercase. We should be so shiny. The world's like, wow, cut you off in traffic. How did you not like curse them out? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Oh, so and so, you know, you're, you're, you were abused. How did you forgive? I'm so glad you asked. The world would be dumbfounded. They don't understand those ways, but we have to live it. It's one thing to know something. It's another thing to do it. Jesus said we're supposed to do, do greater things. Then right. you should that, do greater things. Who, where are we doing the greater things? I, hey, I, I blow bubbles at people who cut me off. <laughs> I, I have a bubble machine. <laughs> Peace be with you. Go. You need to get. <laughs> Go ahead. That's it. I'm not going to ruin my day because you're. How about it. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Tom, Tom blows bubbles at Karen. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I also wave to him. I go, that's yes. what I say now. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, thank you, Andrea. Thank you so much for joining us. I know you're so busy. Thank you for taking the time here and uh, have a blessed Shabbat. And. Uh, until uh, Jeff, we said hello and uh, keep up the great how work. And uh, we'll here, right? how many yeah. people? How many people are here? Oh, uh, we, right now, currently we have ninety six on live from all over the world. Brother Max is all the way from New Zealand. Well, yeah. nice to you all. Have a great night. Shabbat yes. shalom. Thank you. Shalom. Thank you. Shalom. Shalom. All right, everybody. Uh, we had some more people join us in the meantime. Uh, uh, that's going to be a great event. So if you have children, I definitely, I know a lot of people going to Camp Yeshua and all these other camps and all these other things, but this was the first thing I found that's really investing in children and not just letting kids have a good time to pass the time. They were really making an investment. And I know her her sons, I've seen them grow up, literally seen them grow up uh, because I've known them. Uh, I've known the Hazines for over 20 years now. So it's uh it's 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 amazing so hallelujah uh in the meantime brother jose joined us shalom brother jose how are you hello can you hear me yeah yeah how you doing very well shabbat shalom everybody shabbat shalom shabbat shalom it was great seeing you last week man and i hope you had a great week oh thank you thank you shabbat shalom brother tom shabbat shalom jose 
Shabbat Shalom, brother Max. Yes, yes. All right. Uh, I'm here to appreciate uh, the invitation for your house, brother. Was really cool with brother Jacob. We have a good time in there. Yeah, yeah. Was really cool. I want to share something special with you guys. Uh, remember, brother Paul, when I was in your house, me and you and Jacob, and I was kind of quiet. And you look at me like, I'm about to share something. I feel like better don't say nothing. I'm going to share to everybody. At that moment, I was in your house. I don't know if it was a dream or not, but I was there before. I was there. I look at you guys like, I was here before. <laughs> Amazing. I was in your house before, Brother Paul. Amazing. This is my testimony. Wow. I was like, I was, should I say something about it? Be like, no, better don't say nothing. Uh, it's amazing. Thanks, yeah. <laughs> Well, thanks for sharing. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we look forward to seeing you again. Yeah, it was a blessed time. I really appreciate your invitation. Brother Jacob was a great guy. Awesome, awesome time. I really appreciate it. Yes, yes. Uh, we also had uh, Brother Gilbert. Vincent was out as well. We just had a great time. It was oh, a lot yeah. of fun. So thank you. <laughs> thank you, brother. And uh, yes. Uh, you have a blessed, blessed night here and enjoy the Sabbath, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we well, have, uh, we're going to say hello to Brother Charles and then we got a prayer request from Brother Joseph. Let's say hello to Brother Charles and then we'll have a prayer request from Brother Joseph. Uh, Shalom, Brother Charles. How are you? I'm good there, Paul. Uh, come on, Christine. Christine wants to show you something. Okay. Oh, what's what's that? Oh, a turtle? Yeah. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Very okay. nice. Thank you. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom, Christine. Shabbat God made turtles. Yes, and you did. Yes. Uh, How was your week, Brother Charles? Oh, it was difficult at times, but y'all still in control. Yes. Well, we keep you, you and your family lifted up, Brother Charles. You're, you're an encouragement, and uh, you stay strong. Okay, you stay strong, brother. Okay. I'm trying. It's not easy, but you are still in control. Yes, yes. Well, hallelujah, brother. Thank you. We got a. Uh, Wash your hands. Uh, we got a prayer request from our brother Joseph. So hold on, brother Charles. Let's see what his prayer request is. Hold on, brother. Go ahead, brother Charles. You have a, I mean, brother uh, Joseph, you have a prayer request? Yeah, yeah, just a couple quick ones. Um, one is, uh, first, if you notice that there's a, a thing behind me here, uh, it's a replica of Calvary. So I come here, come here to pray. Um, but there's, there's a bunch of prayer requests uh, underneath here where there's like a, a book where a bunch of anonymous people can leave the prayer requests. Uh, there's some people with some really tough things going on in their life. And some people are angry at God and things like that. So just pray for some of some people like that, you know, that might be angry at God, but uh, wondering why God's allowing things. But uh, I also see people who are blessing God as well. So just pray that they, they have that in their heart as well. But uh, the other prayer request is personal. Um, I succeeded. I can't tell too many uh, details, but uh, until the time comes, but I succeeded in getting myself, uh, getting some friends an interview with uh, a really popular Christian uh, radio host. Um, and we're a little anxious about it because we don't know what kind of questions are going to be asked because there's some controversial stuff concerning, you know, messianic stuff. And they're going to be asking us questions about observance and things like that. And, you know, the law and things like that. And so, um, just uh, just pray that God gives us the wisdom to handle the kind of questions that are going to be asked us. We don't know exactly what they're going to ask us or talk, want to talk about. 
So um, pray that that goes civil and well, and we stay focused. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, brother. Absolutely. We'll keep that lifted up. And uh, that's great that there's a prayer book there and people can come and leave prayers. That's wonderful. Yep. Okay. Uh, so in the meantime, we had uh, Nanya Biz joined us. Shalom, Nanya Biz. How are you? Shabbat shalom, everybody. I'm getting my taxes done as I've been doing the last months. Getting, uh, tried to take care of mom's yard. Uh, the city came and mowed it, mowed it for her. I tried to kick, take care of my ex's yard. Her neighbor mowed it. So uh, life's looking good, brother. I had a good week. And I tell you what, man, this is just good. Now, who's going to be singing? It's been an hour and 10 minutes, and I'm waiting for a song. Uh, well, what about you? On a cobweb afternoon in a room full of emptiness by a freeway i confess i was lost in the pages of a book full of death reading how we'll die alone and if we're good we're laid to rest anywhere you want to go in your house we long to be room by room patiently we wait for you there like a stone we wait for you here alone and on my deathbed I will pray to the gods and the angels like a pagan to anyone who will take me to heaven to a place I recall I was there so long ago oh, the sky was bruised the wine was bled and there you led me on in your house we long to be Room by room, patiently, we wait for you here, like a stone, we wait for you here, alone, and on I read until the day was gone and i sat in regret for all the things i've done for all that i've blessed and all that i've wronged in dreams until my death they will wander on in your arms we long to be one by one patiently we wait for you here like a stone we wait for you here alone Thank you, Chris Cornell. You're welcome, brother, and have a good Shabbat Shalom. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. All right. Yes. Paul, can I read? A, I'm not going to sing, but I'll read a scripture. Okay, brother Tom, go ahead. Yeah, uh, this is in regard to something that Joseph was talking about, um, about uh, people getting upset, you know, why. Uh, Yahweh's always doing something, by the way. He never goes a day without doing stuff, by the way. He's busy at work right now. And uh, he's going to do something uh, big in his time. And uh, I can't wait until the return of our Savior, Yeshua. 
which who I love and uh, hold near and dear to my heart um, for all that he's done to deliver me um, as he delivers me today and will deliver me in the future. Um, and uh, it just, um, it, it, I just had to read the book of Habakkuk because um, this prophet uh, was talking about, you know, him coming back. I, I, I challenge everybody to read the, the, three, the, three, the three chapters of Habakkuk, but he's a contemporary of Jeremiah and uh, it speaks volumes to me, especially at this time on earth. So I'm just going to read the first uh, nine uh, verses and then everybody else on your own time can read the rest. But it says here in chapter one, uh, just up to nine, the burden of Habakkuk, the prophet saw, oh, Yahweh, until when shall I cry for help and you will not hear? I cry out to you, violence, but you do not save. Why do you make me see evil and you look upon toil? For destruction and violence are before me, and there is strife and contention rises up. On account of this, Torah has become helpless, and justice does not continually go forth. For the wicked surrounds the righteous, so justice goes forth being perverted. Look among the nations and behold and be amazed. Be amazed, for a work is working in your days which you will not believe, though it be told to you. For behold, I raise up the Chaldeans, the bitter and impetuous nation which is going into the broad spaces of the land to possess dwellings not his own. He is terrible and fearful. His judgment and his glory goes forth from himself. His horses are also swifter than leopards and are fiercer than the evening wolves. And their horsemen spread themselves. Yea, their horsemen come from afar. And they shall fly as the eagle fearing to eat. All of him shall come for violence. The gathering of their faces is forward. And they gathered captives like the sand. So Yahweh is saying he's sending the enemy into the land. Because people have gave up on his Torah, his word. And, uh, and he's trying to see who's going to be uh, faithful to him. So uh, it's coming the time that's happening on the earth today, I believe. And uh, we see it. It's, it's kind of like you can just see it. So uh, we're out. We're out the workers in the field right now. And um, we're trying to lay the seeds where people can get the fruit and grow. So uh, we're, there's work to be done. So no matter how much the enemy throws at us, Yahweh is in control, like Charlie said. And uh, I'm just really grateful to be here as a witness to the people that I go before that Yahweh puts in front of me. And I have the opportunity to give them the faith and the hope of Yeshua coming back soon, because we cannot handle what's coming. We help, we were limited in our power, but Yahweh who has all power um, and all power has been given to his son, which is Yeshua. Um, our salvation has more power than the enemy here in the land. So we need to, we need to count on him. We can't do it as mere men. We just, we just, we're not going to be able to do it. Peace and security cannot come unless Yeshua comes. So hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. Thank you for that. And what's your shirt say? Somebody's asking. Oh, where'd you get that shirt? Oh, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. You're muted, I guess. I'm sorry. Yeah, I found it online. I really liked it, so I ordered it. Can you see it? Yeah. That's nice. That's Hallelujah. Really nice. Praise to the Most High, Creator of heaven and earth. And then, of course, that's the uh, original writing of Yahweh. Nice, nice. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. All right. All right. Well, uh, who else is joining us here? We got, uh, we're got. we going to get some more music here in a moment. Thank you for reading some scripture, Brother Tom. All week, I've been, uh, I've been really inspired this week to do videos, and I made a video just about every day this week. I put a video out, and I was glad about that. But I'm going to sing a song here, and then we're going to hear from Brother Max and I don't know if Sister Pam is up to singing tonight, but she wasn't feeling too well. But everybody keep Sister Pam lifted up this week. And uh, and everyone, please keep my brother Joe lifted up in prayer as well. And, uh, you know, that his heart turned to come to know uh, a wonderful creator because uh, he really we all need it. But, uh, you know, he needs it very soon because he's uh, struggling. So let's lift him up. Yeah, his name's brother. His name's Joe. So keep him in prayer. So, all right. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses, and the voice I hear falling on my ear. 
the Son of God discloses, and he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. He speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet, the birds hush their singing. And the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. I'd stay in the garden with him, though the night around me is falling. But he bids me go. Through the voice of woe, his voice to me is calling. And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Hallelujah. Thanks for the little party popper there. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Uh, if uh, we have no, well, let's see who just joined us. Uh, Brother Willow, what's up? Shalom, brother. Just joined us. He's joining you on the audio. Will. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, brother Tommy. Shabbat How you doing, shalom. man? How, how are you doing tonight? Everybody's good, man. We're good, good. Just relaxing, you know, enjoying the night. Enjoying the Shabbat, resting in him, you know, and um, thinking about who Karen is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Are you Karen? <laughs> yeah, Paulie with his Karen scenario today. Uh, anyway, how are you, brother Tom? All my brothers and sisters. I'm doing good. Thanks, brother Will. Shabbat shalom. Yeah. yeah. How's the wife and family? Good? Everybody's good here. Thanks, brother. How about uh, your man, family? Everybody man. good in your family? Everybody's doing well. Thanks, the Lord. Good. Thanks. Praise Abba. Praise Abba. Every minute, every second. Praise Abba. Everything is good down this way. It's starting to get a little hot over here in Florida. Paulie loves it. Hey, we um, just hit 90 this week. So uh, are you guys you get, you're close to us now? <laughs> 90s. It's been like 95 over here. I know, I know, I know. It's crazy over here. You know, Paulie's man goes up getting bigger than his head. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I smile. Hey, Brooklyn, smile. Hey, uh, Paulie boy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, bro, it's good seeing you guys. Love you guys all. Thanks for coming on and saying hello. And uh, everybody, I remind you, 1030 tomorrow morning, we're doing a Torah reading. Uh, yeah. So I know it's the same time as some other ministries. So, But uh, if you if you don't get a chance to tune in live, tune in after because we, we cover some good stuff there. So, hey, yes. Hey, Yes. Brother okay. Will, Brother Will, did you ever yeah. hear my fruit? Did you ever hear my my fruity joke? No, go ahead, tell me. This is my best one I got. Uh, don't laugh, but uh, it takes two to mango. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you like it? Let me ask you something, um, Brother Tom. Why yeah. grapes don't cry when they stomp on you? 
How come? Because they won. It's <laughs> <laughs> good, man. <laughs> All righty. Uh, so we're, we're going to, somebody has their hand up. Let's see who has their hand up. Uh, Brother Charles has his hand up. I don't know if that's Christina or Charles that has a hand up, uh, but looks like Christina has the iPad there. But Brother Will, we're praying for uh, Sister Liz. Everyone keeps Sister Liz in prayer. And uh, yeah, thanks for you. being here tonight, brother. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, brother you Charles, I don't know if you want to say something or if that was Christina. Yeah, Christine wanted to say something, but I wanted to uh, just keep remembering the minister's wife in prayer. Put that on pause. Uh, yeah, because yeah. she's uh, still having back problems. She might be coming home next week, but uh, they, the minister said she had a good day today. So, and um, my friend Faye said that somebody that she knows uh, needs prayer with something. I'm not sure what, but uh, a friend that knows uh, Michael Rude, he, uh, she is, has uh, cancer, and Faye said she. My friend Faye said she needs some prayer because she's having issues with her heart. Okay, we definitely lift that up in prayer. Absolutely, absolutely, and keep that lifted up. All right, lift prayers up to everyone. Yes, there was a question for Charles. Charles, we yeah. have a question for you. And I know you said Christine wants yeah. to say hello, but you have a question, somebody, Charles. Somebody asked that what the turtle's name was. <laughs> Go ahead. Just I don't know where I am. You're just telling me the turtle's name. It's Buddy. Buddy. Oh, what a great name, Buddy. Oh, that's such a nice name for a, a turtle, your little buddy. So very good. Very good. Well, Shabbat Shalom, Christina, and have have a great uh, Sabbath with Buddy. Yes, he can. Yes. yes. Yeah, we all you... see you. Yes. I wanted to ask him if he likes my teeth. <laughs> Boy, no, brother, Christina. You're something else. <laughs> well, we're praying for uh, everyone there, and uh, yeah, I'll be with you all, and uh, hallelujah. All right. All right. Thank you. Have a blessed, blessed Sabbath with Buddy. And, and, uh, all right. Okay. Uh, uh Brother Max or, was going to give us a song. Yeah, sure. I've got an, a hymn here I, I used to sing a long time ago. Um, it's called Just a Closer Walk with Thee. Just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Yahweh is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, Yahweh. Let it be. I am weak, but thou art strong. Yahweh, keep from all wrong I'll be satisfied as long as I walk with thee close to thee through this world of toils and snares if I fall to Yahoo burden share none but thee Yahweh none but thee when my feeble heart is old time with me shall be no more guide me gently safely oh 
to Jerusalem forevermore. Just a closer walk with me. Grant it, Yahweh is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, Yahweh. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, brother. All right. All right. And uh, so, uh, Sister Pam, how are you feeling? Is Sister Pam still there? Oh, no, maybe not. I think she left, but she said in the side chat she was leaving. Okay, well, we hope she's uh, feeling better. Uh, we hope she's feeling better. So... Yes, uh, so we got uh, some uh, Sabbath plan. Uh, no, some uh, Sukkot plans coming up, everybody. Uh, I'm going to be going to uh, Georgia, but I know that Chris Cash is going to have his event in North Florida, and that's not sold out yet. The one in Sukkot is all filled up. Uh, so, you know, get in touch with Chris Cash if anyone's interested in, in getting on out there. He usually comes on the, the chat tomorrow as well if people have questions. And yeah, so or or whatever's local around you, there's a lot of people that are gonna be celebrating the coat. So so yes, do that for sure. And uh what else is happening? I mean, there's just so much craziness. I try not to watch the news uh because it doesn't affect me or bother me, but but I try not to watch it. But sometimes when I do watch it and I hear the crazy stories and see the crazy things, it's just it's some when you step away from something and you come back to it, it's like, really? When did something like that happen? And you know, but the scriptures reveal like these things are going to be happening. I mean, listen, I mean, right now it's it's crazy enough that that men don't know their men and women don't know their women and all that old stuff, but it literally says in the scriptures there's going to become a time where it's going to be normal where you're probably going to be walking down the street and seeing a human being having sex with an animal, you know, and, and this might happen in dark corners around the world, but this is going to be a normal thing, <laughs> you know? And uh, so, I mean, on one hand, it shouldn't surprise us because the scriptures say that these things are going to happen, but it's just uh, entertaining to say the least about how these things are actually taking place. And what is being allowed and what isn't being allowed. And the media and the control over the world through media stuff. And uh, I I think we need to disconnect and read our word. And I know so many people that they just, they focus on so much, but they they limit the word. And and it's a problem. The word never goes old. But it's a problem. It's a problem. So... So, uh, so yeah, we definitely have to, have to, have to stay speaking to Yahweh and, uh, you know, it's, it's, who knows, who knows what, what, when these things are are going to take place in front of us, but, but we know they will. And this is why I do the prayer meeting at every morning at 6 a.m. So we can start our day out and strengthen ourselves and, and it's a tremendous blessing and a help to me. And uh, and just to know you're there to do corporately together is just a, a big help. Uh, and, you know, the things is everything's going upside down in this world. But, you know, people don't look at it that way. But we know it's 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 just crazy. And. You know, it's a, to a degree, you almost have to laugh, but to another degree, you have to be like, this is just insane. And uh, how far, how far are we going to take it? How far is it going to go? And, you know, how much the people need to go through before they learn. So, but we look at the scriptures and this is why Jeremiah was crying all the time. And the scriptures talk about these things, but I'll teach about all that and been teaching about these things and talking about these things. But a lot of people are getting distracted by, uh, believe it or not, by, by ministries out there, keeping them distracted from what's going on now. <laughs> and you know, and people, uh, I don't know. 
we just pray Yahweh helps us <laughs> soon because we're going to be reading uh, the Torah reading tomorrow. We're going to have a great time with that. I'm just loving that insight that you all have with the Torah reading. So come on and join us at 1030 in the morning if you can. And if there's anyone that has any questions in the side chat, let us know or any comments or any specific things you want to talk about. And we have, some, well, more people are coming on now as it's getting a little later. I think uh, people are, aren't used to, still not used to getting on early. So, uh, but we've had at least now, no, so normally we would start at 10, right? And we've had about 20, 25 people join us in the last 10 minutes. Uh, so maybe uh, we, maybe, maybe next week we might start at nine, but Tom could be a, a great witness to know. I was falling asleep when we'd be staying up till like a quarter to 12 and I'd be like, oh. 15 more minutes but now at least i could stay a little later if i have to and it's, it's okay so so yeah any other comments or questions or anything want to share anything anyone have a scripture to share or anything well i don't have any scripture to share right the second but i wanted to talk a little about about what you were saying and um i study history um to gather uh like because there's nothing new under the sun. So what was done before will be done again. If you just look at the basic fundamentals of what Rome was all about, or even uh, the Greek empire or any superpower as you will. And then if we're, if we're really the next superpower with the dollar leading the charge, uh, generally speaking through power and through uh, money, it implodes from the inside out. And um, we kind of see that as the government is the way it is today in our countries, of course, and it's promoting all the stuff that's the enemy's work in the land. And, um, and Yahweh always has something to say about that. You know, we, we want him to bless our land. We pray for our leaders and for this and that, but will, will he, can he, can he bless something that's not blessable? I ask that question all the time. I don't think he can. I think if, if we're defiling the land and if we're innocent blood is being poured into the land, blood guilt, as you will, from the Torah, you know, he talked a lot about blood guilt. And uh, so many things that are defiling the land and, and, and us, we're letting it happen. And I think that, you know, I mean, I fight back every day, but I don't fight like, like with the sword in my hand. I fight back with, you know, the word of, of Yahweh, of course, with what he stands for. And uh, yeah, I believe, Paul, that he is, he is going to have our backs because, you know, he'll turn his face to us because we're turning to him. Even if we have to suffer like all of the uh, saints or disciples, as you will, uh, ultimately, he's going to raise us, restore us, and uh, it's going to be good because he talks about his kingdom and how we're all going to be part of his kingdom and we're going to have a function in that kingdom. And uh, I, I have to tell my sons this all the time, you know, Dad, will we have wives? Will we have children? Is it going to be good for us in our time, in our day? And I, and I have to comfort them with something. I have to give them something. And I talk about, I said, well, even if it doesn't happen here on earth, I tell my sons, we have Yahweh's kingdom to look forward to, even if we have to leave early on earth. Um, better to live uh, in pure on earth uh, early than living longer and getting infected by sin and not making it later on. So um, I still think that there's something to say about the kingdom that's coming, that, that he's going to raise us all from our, our fleshly deaths. So um, I, I know the hope uh, in this world is, is really it's not good, but the hope in Yeshua is good. So um, it's hard to understand in a physical realm because we want to have wives and babies and, and function here as a family because Yahweh really wanted a family for us in our fallen state. But even, even if we have to leave, because um, people are dying all around me. I mean, I feel like there's death all around me and the enemy owns death, if you ask me, and Yahweh allowed that to happen. So, um, but he said he's going to restore us and raise us from the dead. And that's where my faith is at. So, um, Brother Paul, I, I know that it's really hard these days and we talk about this every day about what, what's happening in the world but the world hated yeshua and they're going to hate us so we have to get ready for that we have to be ready for that yeshua said it the world hated him they're going to hate us so um i just uh, i know my, my comfort comes from yeshua and it and some of our darkest days as, as a man or a woman um it is it, it, going to be dark but yeshua will be the light to that darkness i believe so Hallelujah. And just, uh, just want to give some comfort out there that we, you know, as long as we're allowed to live, we have work to do. That's all I can say. Praise Yah. Praise Yah. You know, something that uh, always uh, comes up 
is uh is 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 the laborers in the vineyard mark uh what is it matthew 20 and for some reason this comes up all the time to me and i've been hearing this a lot but uh, i'm going to read the scripture and then i want to say something about it so for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who's went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers uh, for a certain amount of money a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And to them, he said, you go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right, I will give you. So they went. And going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the 11th hour, he went out and found others standing. And he said to them, why do you stand here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the 11th hour came, each of them received a uh, uh, denarius. Now, when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, this last work, these last worked only one hour, and you had made them equal to us who have bore the burden all day in the scorching heat. But he replied to them, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for this, for Daenerys? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last worker as I give to you. I am not allowed to do what I, uh, am I not allowed to do what I choose with my belong, what belongs to me? Or do you be, be, begrudge me generous, my generosity? So the last will be first and the first will be last. That, I mean, I, I keep thinking about that chapter all the time, all the time. And it really shows where a person's heart is and shows what's going on. And, and I think about today and what's happening out there today. And uh, this speaks a lot to me of what's happening out there. And uh, we have to not get into a confrontation with somebody when they do this, I don't know if you want to call it an attitude or something, but, but we, we've been giving, we've been given treasures with the scriptures and we're called to go out and make disciples. And this whole thing of, uh, I've been working longer and I've been doing this longer and I say it, I'll say it again. I'll remind you all. What if, just what if? Everyone on Judgment Day gets the thumbs up. Every single one, even uh, everyone. Are we going to be joyful? Are we going to say, wait, we, our whole lives, we did this, and this, this wicked person got in too? We can't be thinking like that. We can't be thinking like that. <laughs> and uh, the same thing with the workers. They should have been happy. Wow, that's great. This, this rich guy paid them just as much. They should... We should be joyful for our brothers that didn't have the opportunity to, to work or, or make the money or something, and they still got the same pay, you know, you know, and so just think about these things, everybody think about these things. Thanks, Brother Paul. That was wonderful. And it, it reminds me of the man on that cross that was saying, please remember me when you go to your kingdom. And exactly. She, she was like, I have that power and mercy. And you had a hard change, so you're coming with me. You know that was just wonderful. Thanks, brother Paul, for bringing that up. Exactly, exactly. And the same thing with the with the son, the lost son, right? He comes back, and what did the other son say? I've been working all this time. Yeah, yeah. Get... Yep. So, uh, well, we got somebody else joining us now. Uh, uh, strap in your seatbelts, everybody. Let's say hello. Who's uh, let's say Hang hello on. to Bobby. Shalom, Bobby. How you doing? <laughs> Hi, how you doing? Shalom. <laughs> Shalom. How was uh, how was how was your week? Oh, uh, pretty good. Yeah, having a good time. Uh, worshiping the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah. 
good, good, good. So uh, you getting ready for Shabbat tomorrow, Sabbath? Oh, yeah. We're Shabbatting right now. <laughs> good, good. Uh, who's there with you? Oh, my brother, uh, my son-in-law and, and uh, brother, sister, our daughter-in-law. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> oh, why? <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> well, good, good. Well, Shabbat Shalom, you all, and uh, praise Yah, praise Yah. Thanks for thanks for tuning in. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, we're getting ready to have a big storm here, and it's lightning out and stuff. It's really neat. And uh, yeah. So, okay. how's everybody doing? We're doing great. We're doing great tonight. Uh, that's good. Yeah. Tell them you're going to uh, sing later, babe. Yeah. Are you going to sing for us? Well, I, ha I haven't got a song. Oh, that okay. I'm thinking of. Uh, so, yeah, just been working overtime and yeah, but carrying on. Well, thanks for being here, man, and uh, stopping by and saying hello. Yeah, yeah. So I'll just listen on. <laughs> okay, so. okay. I'm looking uh, for Brother Max here. Whoops. Okay. All righty. So uh, praise Yah, praise Yah. And uh, Jerry, how you doing, man? Oh, there's Max. Max, I was just looking for you on my, my phone. How you doing, man? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm doing well. How about you? We loved your call today. Thank you. It was perfect timing. When we got back and we got your message. <laughs> Thank you. That was wonderful. That made the whole situation even better. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyways, I had a great week. Uh, my semester's over next Wednesday, so I'm pretty close. I'm almost there. But I just wanted to, uh, like, address something. Like, I know people get sad when they lose their loved ones, and some may, like, assume that it's, like, the devil attacking them but the thing is i think it's just a result of this fallen world it doesn't even have to be the devil because what we know from job's story is that job lost everything right he lost everything and his wife told him to curse yah and he refused to and because the because yah allowed the devil to test job to see if he would remain faithful to yah and he ended up getting double what he had but if the devil were really throwing everything he could at us, because with a lot of us, he doesn't have time to just throw everything he can at us. He uses his demons to come up against us. And, but he has his own agendas that he's working on for the whole world. You know, Yah knows, like whether it's to bring on, you know, the end times, only Yah knows. But what I'm saying is that it's a result of this fallen world because we know that when Adam and Eve, when they both took a bite of the fruit, that Yah told them that from dust they came and to dust they shall return. It wasn't the devil that did that. It was Yah that cursed them because they disobeyed him. So like what I'm getting at is like, yeah, I get it. It's hard. It's just a natural part of life, you know, and we're going to experience that. Um, but yeah, that's 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 really what I wanted to say, just to kind of introduce, you know, uh, what I'm talking about or what's going on this week and and all that. I felt like that was on my heart today. So thank you for letting me just say that for a moment. Oh, no, thank you, man. And we keep you lifted up in prayer and. Uh... Uh, absolutely. And tell Joseph, if you speak to him, we, we missed him here tonight and keep him in prayer as well. And, uh, for sure. I know he gets on early in the morning, so hopefully he's getting some good rest right now. And, uh, so I don't know, uh, everybody, I, I haven't been watching the news. I don't watch it. I just love not watching the news, but the last time I heard is that somebody was saying something that there was a leak in the case of the Roe versus Wade that is going to be overturned. And they were talking about that. And somebody told me that the people were marching outside of a judge's building or something. So does anyone know, maybe Max or somebody, I mean, when are they supposed to make this decision? Um, Paul? Yeah, Charles. It was, uh, I'm not sure when they're supposed to make the decision. In but June. It, wasn't, it was outside of the, uh, the judge's house where he lived, where they were marching. And okay. that's it, that's not supposed to be because you're supposed to do all your protesting and stuff that you want to do 
to make your voice be heard, that's that part isn't illegal. But that's supposed to be done at the uh, Supreme Court building. That's where it's designed for people to gather and be uh, protesting and to make their voice be heard, not at some judge's house. Yes, yes. Okay. Well, I agree. And uh, and uh, Max says it's in June. June. Yeah, is there. late June, supposedly, there's supposed to be a decision. But in my eyes, it's just it's another big distraction to me. To me, it's just another way to so see the division between people. Now, we know the story of um, like uh, child sacrifice and molect, and we know all about all that. And but um, yeah, right now in this generation, it's much worse. You know, the genocide that's happened all throughout the years is, is so bad. I mean, it's worse than a bunch of wars combined. But um, I don't think, you know, I know people say God bless America all the time, but with the way that, you know, this country is going, y'all can't really bless us. That's the way that I feel, honestly. And like I said, this is just another distraction of so seeds of division. That's what's going on right now. You know, the left hates the right and the right hates the left. That's kind of always how it's been. Yep, yep, exactly, exactly. Uh, so somebody else, uh, Charles has his hand up again. Go ahead, Charles. <laughs> Yeah, I told Christine the reason why people shouldn't hurt themselves and why uh, they shouldn't be doing that kind of stuff with uh, the things that they do to children is because we are all precious to Yahovah and he loves us. <clears throat> And that is why Satan and the people that follow him, why they uh, want to keep that stuff going. Because Satan knows that we are precious to you. Uh, and that's, that's why he is the only one that has the right to say who lives and who dies. Nobody else does. Because he loves us and cares for us. And just like it says in scripture, he does not with, wish anyone should die, but that all should come to repentance and salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Well, thanks for sharing that, brother. We just had uh, two people join us. David joined us and Sabbath Keepers Fellowship. But now I don't know where David is. Are you there, David? I don't see I David. He jumped, but, he jumped uh, back off again. All right. Sabbath Keepers Fellowship. Shalom. How are you doing? Shalom, Paul. We're uh, wrapping up our Shabbat meal, and we will be with y'all in a few minutes. All right. We'll be wrapping up the show here, so we'll wait for you. <laughs> uh, Very good. So you where is... Uh, I wonder uh, where... Uh, where what's uh where David went, brother David? If you're watching, we're here. Here are we. <laughs> so, yes. And uh, what's everybody's plans for Shabbat tomorrow? Anyone doing anything uh out of the ordinary or different than what you normally do? Anyone got any plans any different? Well, uh, we've got you know Jeff is going out to a couple of units, Vito and Ferguson, and it's going to be um it's interesting. It's really really cool what you always doing. With the ministry and with the inmates out there. Praise so, y'all. Anybody want to volunteer? You can come on. Contact uh -huh. us and we'll we'll see what we can do to help you. They got well, prisons all over the United States. And a bunch in Florida that need help. A lot in Florida that need need volunteers to come in and help them have their services. Yeah, there's uh a lot of need out there, but it's a good thing to, in today's times because with all of the wickedness going on, a lot of people are getting out there and uh, sharing the word. And it's good to just be driving a car down the street and see people holding up signs and and so on. So we need to stay encouraged. And uh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, that's terrible. I'm reading Flora's comment. That's really bad, but. 
It's absolutely terrible. Okay, uh, so who has their hand up here? Bobby. Oh, shalom, Bobby. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to mention what I know about what's going on is, um, okay, we have the World Health, World Health Economic Forum for the 2030 Agenda, the Great Reset. And you bring that reset to reset, you bring everything to nothing. And that means us starving and kicked out of our land. Um, and then um, they start again with their electronic shot and the vaccine and the replacement of the money into crypto and uh, the metaverse, okay, and and making everybody to be part of the the the, the new uh, one world one ruler Lucifer empire um, with the false prophet, and it's happening right now. The the war is made to bring this to pass. We're putting all of our money into this war now. And um, uh, if now if we do get nuked, then um, that would make it where they'd be able to reset us a lot easier. You know, they can clean up the land after that. And, uh, you know, we're, we're pretty far away from where they're at. So it's like all that debris will be over in this area. Um, and while every, all the, the, the wealthy elites, they'll be in their bomb shelters. And uh, right now we've had so many threats from North Korea and all the different uh, nations that hate us, uh, you know, EMPs, everything uh right now we're at a precipice of uh, being uh, attacked with everybody has got their uh they're, they're not one to see the news and i understand that nobody wants to hear this stuff but i watch diligently and and this is what's going to come down and we're gonna a lot of people are not going to be ready for this at all they're not going to be ready it's going to be the preemptive movie red dawn if we don't get the nuclear attack and totally wiped out, we will be slaves or killed. And well, well, they I, had the, the camps already set up. I, uh, Oh, also there's, um, there's, they've sent in thousands upon thousands of, uh, militia men taking the place as U S marshals or, Whatever the U.S. Uh, they want to cover up as, they're they're acting like they're Americans and saying they're Americans and they're not. And I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't confirm that. I don't agree with that. I don't, I don't. Okay. You know, now, I, do, you, do you know? Um, do you ever watch the Info Wars? Uh, I've seen it in the past. Okay. Well, Info Wars. And if you get on Brighton or Bitch Shoot, I watched both of those, and I'm I hear what you're saying. But um, now this stuff is these this news is on uh, the whistleblowers. All of them are on those on those uh, places, okay? Because and Rumble and uh, now these these news agencies have been people have been kicked off of YouTube because. Everything has been censored now, what you say. And we've had um, true news. True news has been totally wiped out. Yeah, yeah. So, well, let's um, praise let's praise him tonight. Let's praise him. We got a bunch of people with their hands up. Okay. Let's praise our Thank creator. Thank you. You got a song for us yet? I'll try <laughs> to think of something. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, we're going to go to... Uh, uh, Ma Max and then Pam and uh, uh, Patty and Tom. First, let's go to Max. Go ahead, Max. Yeah, I was going to say, we know that the elites are pushing like degeneracy, like they're pushing it left and right. So we have a society that's morally deteriorating. 
which is why in Revelation 6, you know, talks about, you know, the kings hiding in the rocks in the mountains saying for the rocks to fall on them and hide them from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb. We know that when the Messiah comes, it's going to be a fearful day because on that same day, it's not just going to be the, it's not just going to be Yah judging. It's not just going to be Yah judging the whole world. It's going to be the Messiah coming and setting up his new kingdom and overthrowing the, the, the kings who currently stand now, the wicked kings, the wicked rulers. And so, uh, you know, that's interesting because not only are the elite, not only are the elites pushing degeneracy, you know, they're telling the politicians to push like snake bites. And so they're they're telling all of society to, you know, to not trust in Yah, but to trust in a snake bite. And so, you know, a bunch of people all across the world are taking it, thinking that they're safe. You know, first Thessalonians, I think, chapter five, verse three says that they shall say peace and sa- for they shall say peace and safety and sudden destruction will come upon them. So there are these people living in the illusion of peace and safety. Now, what we what we know from the market kind of is that it doesn't look very good. You know, a lot of people are losing their retirement money it's and 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 a lot of people have lost their businesses and so we're likely to see not just an economic recession an economic depression and so with the times coming we really need to put our trust and full faith in yah and nothing else because really tough times are coming i feel like and that's all i have to say okay uh brother tom you had your hand up that yeah i was, math- just wanted to say that uh we've been through some hard times before we're going through some hard times now. We're going to go through some hard times in the future, and, and there might be some good days ahead. And we don't we don't know. If we keep turning back to Yahweh. Yahweh will favor us. But if not, obviously judgments will come. And Yeshua, you know, he said there will be wars. There'll be rumors of wars. There'll be all kinds of bad stuff that's happening. But our job is to promote the kingdom. If we if we focus too much on uh, the enemy system, it's a distraction. Um, Yahweh's kingdom is coming with power, uh, power that this world has never seen or, 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 or doesn't understand. The power of the world is nothing compared to the power of Yahweh and his kingdom. And we just got to make sure that we're on the side of Yahweh in that power structure. We don't want to be caught up in the power structure of this world. It's clear. Yeshua said, if you love this world, you're an enemy of Yahweh. Clear. So we cannot be part of this world. We can live in it, but we can't be part of it. We got it. We are part of the kingdom of Yahweh coming, and the kingdom is going to be so good, guys. We have no idea. He told us we have no idea what He's prepared for us. It's going to be really good. We need we need to be promoting the kingdom of Yahweh in in the land. That's what we need to talk about. That, that's what I want to share. Okay, thank you for sharing that. And uh, when you said we've been through some hard times. Uh, I know everything somebody everything somebody is going through is hard, uh, but and I'm not telling us to do it on a comparative schedule. But we ain't seen nothing. I mean, we, you know, there's so much going on out there in the world that 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 just we've been spared from for so long, and uh, you know, it's uh, when we're going through an individual situation, nothing else matters. You know, it's just tough tough times are here, but. When we look at the persecution in the scriptural times all the way up to today, uh, we've somehow haven't experienced it yet to the degree that most of the world experiences it. And, uh, you know, I like the phrase slow train coming fast. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. Joseph, so, uh, Israel. Joseph Israel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, Brother Charles, your hand is up. Yeah, I <clears throat> all this stuff that's happening, it says it in scripture that it has to happen after it's all over and done with. We're gonna be in his presence. And I have read the back of the book. I don't care what Satan and his wicked followers say. Yeshua wins, and they can't do nothing about it. All they can do is try to overcome him. They will never 
be able to overcome him. Because he will overcome evil with his good and, pow and power. He, he is perfect in every way and he he's just the winner and they that drives them really mad and it makes them angry because they know they can't win hallelujah hallelujah in your presence that's where i am strong in your presence, oh, yeah, my God. In your presence, that's where I belong. Seeking your face, touching your grace. In the cleft of the rock, in your presence, oh, yeah. I want to go where the rivers cannot overflow me. Where my feet on the rock I want to hide. Where the blazing fire cannot burn me. In your presence, oh yeah. I want to hide where the flood of evil cannot reach me. Where I am covered by the blood. I want to be where the scams of darkness cannot touch me in your presence. Oh, yeah. You are my firm foundation. I trust in you all day long. I am your child and your servant, and you are my strength and my song. You are my song, seeking your face, touching your grace. In the cleft of the rock, in your presence, oh God. In your presence, oh, yeah, that's where I belong. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks. Thanks. Brother Max has his hand up, and then Sabbath Keepers Fellowship will close us out. Go ahead, Brother Max. I was going to say, speaking of the wheats and tares, you know, like you said, we haven't experienced real persecution. So we can't, like you said, we can't really say that the devil's throwing everything at us because he hasn't. Because if he has, we would be persecuted like the first century apostles, probably. We would be persecuted like the... And on top of that, he said in Matthew 13 that the tares would be weeded out by persecution. So... Like people teaching a rapture doctrine, we know that biblically that's incorrect because the Bible tells us that for our beliefs are going to be persecuted. And then on top of that, when Yeshua is speaking in Matthew 24 to his disciples, he's telling him, he's telling them that, you know, that we're going to see the sign of his coming, that the tribes of the earth will mourn, but that that'll happen after the trip, the time of the tribulation, when the sun and the moon are darkened, uh, when the sun is darkened, the moon will not show its light, he said, so. And then on top of that, um, I think I wanted to hit on what, you know, somebody else was speaking about was crypto. To me, I think a lot of the crypto is going to go to zero. Personally, I think a lot of it's going to crash. I think me personally, I think a lot of it's fake and um, because it's not really backed by anything and it doesn't have any value. And then to touch on the metaverse just real briefly, you know, people are thinking of perverted things, right? Like, um, sexual perversion was sex before marriage it was adultery and then in this virtual age it kind of became pornography now with regards to the metaverse i think you're going to start seeing sexual perversion on the metaverse like you're going to have people trying to have virtual sex like which i think is crazy but i think like the devil is just you know he's he's you know he's allowing well yah is allowing humans to figure out ways to become more and more evil until he officially has to bring judgment on them just like he kind of let Nimrod say, you know, I'm going to build a tower of Babel. And then he, and then at some point he had to decide to divide their tongues. So at some point, Yah is going to intervene. 
And according to Deuteronomy 31, he says, I, Yahweh says, I am a jealous Elohim, right? But he doesn't mean this in a childish manner. It means he, he desires worship and reverence on our part, meaning that you will have no gods. You will have no idols before me. And that includes celebrities. Many people worship celebrities today. They're idols. So rather than worshiping golden calves, we're worshiping people. And he says he desires that we don't have any gods before him, that we put him first. Anyways, that's all. Throw down that mic. Hallelujah. <laughs> that's great. All right. Thanks, Brother Max. Thank you. All right. All right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, all right. Uh, Sabbath Keepers Fellowship, you there? Okay. They're enjoying their Sabbath meal, but it's getting, getting late. Getting late. Anyone else got a song? Okay, well, uh, I know some people are just joining us. Uh, thank you, uh, everybody, for uh, being here. And remember, tomorrow morning at 1030, we'll be doing this again. Uh, we'll be doing the, reading the Torah reading tomorrow morning at 1030. And uh, just for those of you that don't know uh, the Torah reading, maybe somebody has an insight uh, uh, on it. Uh, but tomorrow, tomorrow's Torah portion reading is going to be Let's let's go there and I'll tell you tomorrow is going to be uh, this week. Uh, Leviticus 21, 1 to 24, 23. And the half Torah reading is going to be Ezekiel 44, 15 to 31. And the gospel is Matthew 26, 59 to 66. So that's going to be that uh, tomorrow. And uh, you're not there, Brother Sa uh, Sabbath Keepers Fellowship? Okay. Max, is your hand up again or was it up from before? It is. It is. Go you ahead. know what I used to say? I used to talk with people because people are confused about Torah. And we know that Torah means like instructions. It's Yah's instructions to us, right? Because he entered a covenant of marriage with Israel. And so Torah is like the house rules that Israel has to follow, right? You know, husband usually has house rules for the wife and then for the children. And what I'm thinking is like people are confused because, you know, they're New Testament only Christians, you know, whatever. But what's interesting is I, I tell this all the time to people who are like devout Christians is like, literally, you don't just read Romans 10, 9 and say, you know, once saved, always saved. I have the license to keep on sinning because of grace. You know, Paul said in Romans 3 that we don't make void the law through faith. But, you know, what, what I'm trying to get at here is that I tell them that Literally, if you keep the whole New Testament, you're keeping the Torah because that's what the whole New Testament is based around. The whole New Testament. It's like if you're New Testament only, as long as you're reading the whole New Testament and keeping the whole New Testament, you are keeping Torah. I mean, because the New Testament literally teaches the Old Testament. I mean, because the 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 um, I guess you could say the apostles really had nothing other they had no other scriptures to teach but the old testament during their time the new the new testament didn't exist but now that we have a new testament it's all based and 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 founded in the torah and the tanakh and so that's what i want people to realize is that the whole bible is the house rules that yah has for us it's not just one part it's not just one chapter and another it's not one verse and then the other it's it's the whole entire bible that's why Rather than saying, you know, you're Christian or whatever, you, you, you probably should say that you're a whole Bible believer or I am a Bible believer. That way you're more clear because you believe also in keeping the Sabbath day and not going to church for 17 minutes and watching the NFL. You know, so, so keeping the Sabbath means keeping the Sabbath. Right. I mean, it's a sign between us and Yah for all generations. And so that's the important part about the Sabbath. I think what's really going to separate the true believers in the time of tribulation is the Sabbath. And the main reason, the, the, the way that kind of like, I think the end times government is going to be able to differentiate between believers and normal people is whether they keep the Sabbath or not. And that's why you're going to have the martyrs of revelation. Okay. Okay. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, and shalom to brother Aaron, who's just joining us now. I don't know. Sabbath keepers fellowship. Did you want to, did you want to give us a song or are you, you're, <laughs> you, you're taking Shabbat that shalom, off? Paul. Shabbat shalom. How are you doing? Excellent. Excellent. How are you? Shabbating. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Oh, oh yeah. Great. Good to see you all. You're getting us a rest. Yes. Yes. Did you have a good Shabbat meal? Oh, we had we excellent. We had some lamb. It was terrific. Uh, I know. And but... Brussels sprouts. And Brussels sprouts. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Squash and onion. Yeah, Brussels sprouts, onion. Squash. Even does Squash. wonderful And stuff. a little leftover Passover horseradish. That, <laughs> a lot of leftover Passover horseradish. Uh -huh. I'll tell you what. Oh, great, great. Well, uh, the Sabbath is uh, amongst us. And uh, you have a good uh, song that you planned out? Because I know you've been thinking about it all day. What song are you going to sing tonight? So. Actually, we've been talking about it all day long. We've been talking about nothing but the Paul Neeson Tour Life Ministry <laughs> Shabbat show and what we were going to sing and what you were going to say and uh, what you were going to do. Wow. Well, now the time has come. That's either right. Reveal, yeah. Either reveal it. The rubber meets the road. <laughs> was it the moment of truth kind of thing? No, actually, um, uh, it, it's kind of interesting because uh, every uh, uh, sixth day of the week in the afternoon, I'll say, hey, or at lunch or something, what are we going to sing on a Paul's show tonight? And everybody says, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this week, uh, Lisa, my wife, just said, as the deer. That's what we're doing. Okay. So it was just like that. And so I guess that's what we'll do for me. We've always liked that song. Scripture, how can you go wrong? Well, as they say in show business, the screen is yours. <laughs> wow, I never heard that before. I do. Pants for the water, so my soul loves after you. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. You alone are my strength, my shield, and you alone make my spirit heal. You are. Beautiful. That was wonderful. Really nice. We should yeah. always be panting for the most high. In his word. In his word. Hallelujah. 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 That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Thank you. Well, all right. Does anyone else have anything else to share before we are close for tonight? I know some of you don't want to leave, but you're not sharing. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if anyone has anything... Uh, all righty. Well, we lift up all those whose hearts are not circumcised, that they would come to see the truth. And this this day would be the day. But Yahweh's will be done, and we could be at peace with that. And uh, shalom, Brother Aaron. Uh, shalom to you. We see you there. 
if you want to say hello. <laughs> but uh, you know. yeah, I'm here. How you doing, man? Doing well, doing well. Still alive. Hallelujah. Every day is a gift. You're still in California? Yes, sir. Still in California. Don't want to give away too much because I don't think that'd be wise. But anyways, um, not that I'm wise, but yeah, I'm just here in Cali and making my way day by day as we're supposed to, you know, How, Great. and Great. Um, not living in fear, but trusting Yah and wearing the armor of God always. Hallelujah. All right. Well, praise Yah. Praise Yah. You have a blessed Sabbath day tomorrow there. Thank you, brother. All right. As well. Peace to you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Max, your hand is up again. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to close with this is that we know that according to the scriptures that once the event have, have, has come in, Israel will be saved and, you know, um, it's it, 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 it might be hard to explain it to someone, but if you go and read like Romans, I think it's 12 and 13, maybe even 14, it talks about how we're all like how Shaul, we know that he was the ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes, but he wrote Romans and he said that by faith, we're literally Gentile Ephraimites and we're grafted into the Jewish root through Yeshua. And so that's how we become grafted into Israel. Right. And, um, and there's even scriptures talking about how, you know, how he, how we should humble ourselves, right? So we can be exalted rather than exalt ourselves and then be humbled. Uh, because, you know, he tells us that the branches cannot, can be cut off. You know what I'm saying? And so that's, that's, you know, that once saved, always saved mentality is bad because he also tells us again in the book of, in the book of, um, no, he also tells us again that we must endure until the end. Like he who endures until the end will be saved. He also tells us again in Revelation, the Messiah, well, Messiah does. He tells us to not lose our crowns, right? Or to not let people take our crowns, right? You know, not let, lot, don't let them take what you already have. And so and that's why it's important that we keep it no matter what. We keep the faith. And that's why persecution is going to come because he's going to weed out the fake believers versus the real believers. And so that's what I believe the book of Revelation is all about. That's why I've always loved that book. But anyways, Paul, I thank you. Um, I hope everyone has a blessed Sabbath, a peaceful one. And thank you. Well, thanks for joining us, brother. Thanks for being here tonight and keep learning. Keep up the great work. And uh, for everyone else that's joining, thank you all for joining us here tonight. And uh, yeah, I'll be with you all. Get some good rest. And uh, if you can, join us tomorrow at 1030 a.m. for our morning prayer and also for our Bible reading. And uh, praise you all for just this great opportunity to do this. And uh, thank you. Thank you all for being here. Brother Tom, thanks for helping out and for being here tonight. And uh, stay warm out there in 90 degrees, man. Yes, sir. And may Yahweh bless you and everybody here. Yes, and uh, I'll, I'll look forward to talking to you and seeing you soon, Tom, and everyone else here. Have a blessed night. We won't be too long. We'll be back tomorrow morning. So uh, have a blessed night and get some good rest. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. And Bye. Shalom, shalom, everybody. shalom, everybody. Shalom. Yeshua loves you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.